Okay. So that <clears throat> good. I like that position. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What time do we have? Okay. Six, Six o'clock. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is a regular meeting of the Town of Washington Planning Board. Uh, we do have a quorum present, we believe. We have three members here, Richard, Susan, Emily, and we have Jim Cornell on Zoom. Uh, if everyone is here, we will uh, say the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Has everyone received the minutes? Yes. 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 And are there any corrections to the minutes, changes? No. 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 Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, so we have one matter on for public hearing tonight, the Woodner matter. That's uh, an application for a special use permit for conversion of a one-bedroom apartment into a two-bedroom apartment for farm employee housing. A second kitchen and bath are going to be added. There's no proposed expansion of the existing building and at our last meeting we waive the requirement for a site plan. We also declare the application is a type two under seeker. Um, so can I get a motion to open the public hearing? Motion to open the public hearing. Second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, if it, just to refresh my memory, where is it? No wetlands anywhere near the change? Oh, yeah. No, no, it's a no. No, there's no other Okay, thank you very much. So um, we would ask you to come forward. Have a seat. Okay. So um, because the public hearing, we'd ask you to briefly just summarize what the application is. And uh, so the applicant is looking to divide an existing legal uh, one bedroom apartment into two studio apartments. Um, you know, she's looking to provide the opportunity to have farmhand, you know, work or have farmhands have uh, living space uh, on the property. I mean, it's a simple division of you know the two, uh, the one building into two. Well, what else is there? Stays. It's pretty basic. Okay. Uh, um, Aaron, is there anything still outstanding? Nothing, this nothing new. Up, you have summed it up pretty well from the last meeting. We, we type two it for Seeker. We set the hearing. Um, we talked about the site plan requirements and how you waive that. Um, and even though it is subject to the ag and markets, it's also subject to the special permit requirements of the planning board, which is why we're here for this. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Is there any public comment? We don't have any public, I don't think. Any of board members have any other comments or questions about the application? No. Is this similar to what was approved at the Millbrook Winery when they put in a, you know, they put in a portable, uh, a, um, a prefabricated structure for housing farm employees? Is this a farm? Yes. It's an operating farm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I have no questions. Okay. Um, so if there's nothing else, can I get a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close hearing. Seconded? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so Sarah has prepared a resolution approving this. Um, have you had a chance to look at that? Yes. Review that? Yes. Any comments? No? no. Okay. So can I get a motion to adopt the resolution as prepared? Motion to adopt the resolution. Seconded? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
You're all set. Congratulations. Yep. I mean, what resolution basically says? Says so you permit it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll send you a sign, sign. copy that'll be filed with the clerk, but that's what it was reviewed, so it was granted. Okay. So you can take that to Jameson if you want, and he'll give you the building permit. Right. Okay. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Right. Nice meeting you. Thank you. <laughs> you got an easy one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now our workshop matter is not here. Huh. Good. Let's discuss it, though. Can we, can we discuss it? <laughs> no, can we discuss it? Do you want an intro? No. no. I mean, you really want the applicant yeah. here so they don't yeah. miss any information. Okay. All right. Could be late. Usually. Yeah, it depends on the I will wait. We'll wait. Because, um, he probably. He did send a few letters. The thing and, is, you know, he was first on the on the agenda this time so uh -huh. and he would have seen the agenda correct um not necessarily not send the applicant but it's up agenda. online it's, they just well, know that they're okay. seven minutes after so yeah that's hmm? what was that jim uh you said he was he's second on the agenda right i mean he's, he is he's, he is now but the first agenda had him on first yeah. so i thought well wouldn't he have been here the first and i didn't print the second one yeah. i just made an arrow switching them he was told by the ZBA he has to see you guys, so he he knows. Yeah. Uh, he knows that he's, yeah, he, he knows he's on to the for, for the height variance. He needs to see us. Yeah, and, they, uh, yeah. he has to come up with some some height no, variance, no, some no, documentation no. about the height of the eve. Oh, was some weird or something thing. over. Yeah. My truck blew over. What was that? That was Mr. Mr. George. Yeah. It's got a big truck. Um, yeah, yeah I when mean, he first went out, it was like boom. Oh, so they didn't. So. He didn't really submit anything either by the deadline for the yeah. meeting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Brian. Yeah. Maybe? No, no wetlands. So, he, so he's not applying for wetlands, but it doesn't appear we, that he's applying for wetlands. Well, he doesn't seem to understand. We could we or talk about. So it. even though we, 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 we oh here comes somebody. Nope. Oh, yeah. it's, Mr. it's the man from Clinton. Hi. 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 <laughs> We're actually waiting for the applicant for Upton Lake to show up. No. So. Upton Lake School. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, oh, no, no, he's from Clinton, Clinton, Clinton Planning, Planning, Planning Board. Board. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Would it be possible to get, like, enough um, for that site plan, the updated site plan? Yeah, we're looking we, for that too. So. We're we're waiting on that, something. We're also oh, looking you're for, waiting that. for that too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> if, if there is going to be one. Zoning code, because is a, and he, I notice there's a lot of properties on the other side, your side. And they probably yeah. use round water. I'm thinking for drinking water. They look like small properties. You don't have municipal water out there, do you? No. So the next question for me, I'm just curious. Do you have an aquifer law? In your, which would have a buffer for the, which, for the wetlands. Yeah. Well, just a, a well, buffer which has an aquifer and would have a buffer for surrounding the aquifer. Okay. So that you protect the groundwater in the aquifer that people use for drinking. Um. What is so, it, the well close by? There, there might be an aquifer up there, depending on which map you look at. Okay. And it, it wouldn't be them so much. It would be all those little parcels next to it that would have wells down into that aquifer. If the, if it's okay. You have to find out which map you have because. These maps are all over the place with the aquifers. We're trying to straighten that out. Right? Yeah. Uh, but it just occurred to me that they, all these people live on the other side of the line, and so they would use the, well the water, leaf, and the well water is on the primary on aquifer. That's what they're using. They are. Okay. Yeah. But then when, that's that's maybe cool. water. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't really feel like it.
Yeah. I mean, just a status update on. Yeah. Well. Where are you guys on your, on your, are you basically what just in fact, I'm not sure what you're doing? You can, can get this to close some attention so I can make a statement. I believe it's still in the works. What oh, statement? About I, I was okay, so we need to make a statement. Then we received these letters, you know, about the DEC and mm -hmm. Army Corps of Engineers and uh, that as if there are no supplies, our uh, weapons and supplies. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make that statement without the applicant here? Yeah, is that that person you can do that. Yeah. And then it'll oh. be in the minutes. Right. Oh, so okay. I missed that. I'm sorry. Show up mm -hmm. and then we can have the communication with them. Mm -hmm. But even if he's not here, we can stay scheduled for a workshop. The board's making these comments, have them be put into the minutes, and then Aaron or the council can contact it. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we're back on. Right. Well, there's two issues that we talked about last month, right? One was having the fire department of both municipalities, Clinton and Millbrook, fire departments uh, weigh in on the access road proposed around the buildings. Mm -hmm. We did get feedback from both of them and they both seem to be in agreement that it's not necessary, primarily due to the constraints that would be behind the structures between the buildings and the slopes that are back there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an expert in fire fighting, but the collapse zone is a concern and mm -hmm. um, that you can get, if you know, you're in the collapse zone and you could technically get stuck back there between the slopes and the building by debris if there's apparatus back there. Mm -hmm. So they don't think it's necessary. They think they can still fight a fire adequately without it. So that's important because that eliminates any disturbance to um, the entry road going off the entry road, which would be very close to the Clinton line and the Clinton mm -hmm. wetlands authorities, right? So if that goes away, it's really just um, the work they're proposing in the parking lot area that's adjacent to your wetland buffer right. um, that would be still the outstanding thing. Um, they are in front of the ZBA still for the height and I think it was the, the Millbrook Fire Department raised a concern about the height or not really understanding the roof height and the pitch mm -hmm. and where the, the eaves were. Replacing yeah, so I, I told Mr. Bowie to reach out to them and just meet with them about that so they can understand better what's happening. Mm -hmm. I think he can. that's fine to do on his own and he can report back or we can hear back from the chief on that. Um, so that's still at the ZBA. The ZBA is waiting for the planning board to do Seeker, which relies a lot on what's this plan going to look like. Is the access road in or out? It sounds like it's out. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation for... It's out. It's right, as far as the fire department, but the applicant hasn't agreed that it's out and hasn't, hasn't revised I'm sure. Sure, if the town is saying we don't really need it, that yeah. he would be willing he to seemed, save his clients some money. He wedded to it in some way, though. <laughs> yeah, that for I, reasons I was we not understanding. Right. Yeah, exactly. so we'll we have to talk about it. But I think if he, my advice would be to direct him to remove that from the plan, mm -hmm. or, uh, amend the site plan to take that out, take that out, um, and then apply for the wetlands permit that we pretty much determined is well, necessary for the parking lot work. If he left the park of the parking lot that's in the buffer untouched. In other words, he revises his plan and leaves it, the part that's in, in the buffer untouched and only uh, improves the lot, the uh, parking where it's out of the buffer. Can, we then, can, 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 can he then proceed without a wetlands permit? Technically, by the, what the code says, yeah. yeah. But I think his idea is they want to formalize that parking lot, I know. pave it, I know stripe that, it, he, I don't think storm he water. understands what he's heading into because right. he has the means to um, to put that parking lot somewhere else on the property without entering that buffer. And so or, we would, I won't say how we would rule, but we would be not so um, open to open to having that parking lot be improved that way as on his plan. So he may run into a situation where it's not worthwhile going for a, a wetlands permit. Maybe he should just understand that he can relocate part of that parking lot in, out of the buffer and save himself a lot of trouble. That's true. Mm -hmm. It's hard like, to know how much we can say to him I, because it seems that he's a little bit confused about our wetlands law versus That's DEC and next, federal, yeah. and as long as long as he doesn't have DEC or federal wetlands, he's okay. Or it's not and true. he doesn't yeah. seem to. Understand. So he sent a couple of emails to Kristen, and I think with all of us copied, maybe not all of us, but I was definitely on the emails, um, showing evidence. He had email correspondence with DEC and Army Corps. I was impressed actually that he was able to get Army Corps to 
respond because they don't <laughs> very quickly out of the city office. Um, but uh, you know, they they both were saying, yeah, oh, we don't have jurisdiction. We knew that already from day one on this, and it's not that doesn't matter. It's the town. This, this is that stream and that pond. It's really the stream in this case. It's the concern because it's the buffer for the stream is impact is going over to the parking lot. Um, it's it's mapped on the town's wetlands and watercourse map, so it's subject to the town wetlands law. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that but requires the permit. But I think we said that, or yeah, yeah we did. I but thought we did. And, <laughs> and I, I called him, and I left a message because he called me, and I missed his call. But I relayed basically what I just summarized to you: the mm -hmm. two issues of the road and the permit, and that the Army Corps and DEC correspondence is pretty much useless for the board. <laughs> um, and I, I didn't hear back from him. So, I mean, that's. Where we stand now is, I think, advising him to remove the road and, you know, consider the parking lot either amending it or going forward with a wetlands permit. Very good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those are his choices, either move the parking lot. And they seem to have a lot of land there. Yeah, have a land to move the parking lot, too. Or and create a wetlands and application. Turn, and create a turnaround loop. Yeah. So he's got the land there to do it. Is that him? I don't know. I'm going to pick up. So that's my Which summary. I guess we can wait now. Let's wait a few more okay. minutes. I don't know what the appropriate amount of time to wait for somebody is really. Has Steve Marino been consulted on this? Not yet. Not until I think it would be appropriate until an application comes in for him to get involved. On, um, But... um. Yeah, so far he hasn't been looped in on this. This application is taking a very long time, though. I mean, it's I mean, it's very ponderable. It is. This this one here, it's up and up. Okay, he's he's going. You know, it seems like it goes in all different directions. I think it's hard for us to make any determinations when we don't have a set plan. That's what I mean. The plan it's like, is not. It's like we're helping. Yeah. We're, we're part of the planning process. Um, yeah. Part of being presented with the plan, he sort of seems to. He so he's finding his way um, through. The last meeting, we did make a suggestion about relocating the parking out of the buffer, and the we had concerns about the road. Um, and we addressed those, and um, uh, he he um, he was going to come here with a revised plan, or or mm -hmm. ask for a wetlands permit. Somebody's coming. There he is. Hello. Hi. Come join us. You're up. <laughs> come join us. Come join us. Yeah. I didn't know when. How's everybody doing? Good to see everybody. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for other matter ended very quickly. So. <laughs> Uh, I'll speak up a little bit. Yeah, speak up sorry, I'm wearing a mask so tonight, but um, I'm I'm not sick. I'm just all right. So I yeah, I print out. Just uh, to discuss. You can. You can. Okay. Okay. So I've been working with my um, site planning engineer hard on just trying to fit everything into this nice little puzzle. And so what what you see here, the, the red line represents the uh, the hundred foot buffer line to kind of put everything into perspective. <clears throat> what We've tried to take a look at uh, moving parking lots around and trying to fit the spaces. We found it difficult to do that and still fit everything into the property line. We, if you take a look, one of the things is we've got the existing school that happens to run right through that line as well. Um, that really is the really the only area. Of, for us to be able to put the playground. The playground right now is currently, if you take a look at those two dotted squares, those dashed squares, is where the proposed new septic area is. 
And what I don't want to do is I don't want to build and put any kind of fixed septic or excuse me, um, playground equipment over top of the septic itself. Um, while the playground stuff requires digging and pouring concrete and whatnot. And the area to be able to stay anywhere remotely away from the buffer line is right there. If we go to the far right, uh, we have the other septic that's taking care of the elementary school and the uh, church sanctuary. Where's that one? Where's that septic? This. Yeah, so well, that that is? Is? Yeah, that's, so that's yeah. the septic field there. Um, so it's the ideal area. If I go even farther to the left where I've got written the proposed playground, that's a soccer field to, to that left there. Um, so, the, you know, I do, I do realize that however it, it's going to happen, that I am cutting into that buffer line somewhere, whether it, when I'm taking down the old building, there's going to be work proposed there. What I'm also looking to do is remove the existing septic system that's sitting, it's probably small, but existing septic system is sitting right in that little area where the triangle is. Yeah. So I want to be able to, if we were, we're looking to have a clean, a, a clean uh, area, I'm going to end up having to do some work okay. in that in that buffer area. Also, we had talked about um, what to do with the park spaces, and literally what ends up happening is I would end up taking pretty much a, a good 50% of the parking space away if I were to try to move it into any other location, and I haven't been able to fit anything in any other area of the, of the property. Um, and same thing with our, our site engineer, same thing, trying to get it to flow freely around. The other thing that I did do was I did, if you notice, as far as um, on the right-hand side, um, move the access road out of the buffer area. I'm still looking to... Are you still looking to have that despite yeah, and, the and, fire and, and, department's and, and, and the re, uh, Yeah, and I think the two reasons is there is a, an existing propane tank that serves uh, the elementary school, which is located into this back corner here, it's located where you were here, mm -hmm. which we still, I mean, they're not getting it serviced every day, but I'm, I'm assuming that it's probably once a month they're probably getting, they're getting a, a propane delivery. They also have... How are they getting that now without a road? <clears throat> right now, what they're doing is uh, they're able to, my bearing here, mm -hmm. they're able to pull the truck right up, because this is all parking lot space. They're able to pull the truck up here and then drag the hose down this spot right here. Couldn't they continue to do that? Well, they wouldn't. Have, there wouldn't be enough because they're, we're looking to make a connection to the building oh, so that so the principal could through. have free okay. flow back and through. So we wouldn't have room there. Mm -hmm. So, and there's also one, the oil tanks here. So whether I have full access all the way around, it's from from a utilitarian uh, being able to maintain. Uh, fuel being able to come into the building comfortably. Oh, I, I, I think keeping the road out of the buffer is good. Yeah. Um, and just be able to do regular maintenance on it. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's good. Is there a way to maybe just have the road start here and kind of mm -hmm. end here instead of doing yeah, it from here? So, you know, maybe just having the access start here, go to the spot where you have the utility issues and just kind of end it there that's and, nice. instead yeah. of making it go all the way around? Sure, sure. I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's all feasible. You know, I think it's, actually, you know, if I can get something really good to the direction. It could save, you know, earthwork costs and yeah. everything else, the retaining wall. Right. So put back there. that would be a nice, yeah, you could back out of that. So 
I, I know well, the actually, fuel guys. Actually, all he would need to do is get to somewhere around here and run his line up there. Correct. I think if the fuel guys would be able just to be able to just to back their truck yeah. up to a point, because I think they have some 100 or 150 feet. Right. And like line you on do there. have a little extra room back here that you could even make a pull in so they could turn their truck. Around. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That might yeah. be the way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Rather, yeah. Than, rather than go all the way around. around. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. let me yeah. ask you: Do you don't think it's possible to just extend this parking lot straight out like this, huh? I can do so, build it up in there. So I could get. I, you know, certainly I can get uh, a few parking spots in there, but the, really what I'm concerned about is really this whole area really ends up being cut cut out because there's, there's still a flow of being able to back in, right. park, and then pull back out again. Right. I still have also the flow of, of uh, buses or traffic being able to pull in and out. So, right. yes, I, I would say that we can get a few cars here, but I can't get the 22 cars mm -hmm. if I'm going to be able to uh, give them a playground again. Um, that, and, that, and what that does, so, that keeps me completely out of the area as far as So let me play with you a little. I'm just, I'm just playing. Sure, right. sure. So say you took this big gap here and closed it and didn't have a long one or something but 10 feet in there, maybe one feet or two feet. And that would let a vehicle back out and move if you move this all this way. And you need eight spaces over here, or ten spaces, and that then that's, those cars can go just like this and turn around in that space, right? And you basically move in this parking lot right attached to this, and it's totally out of the buffer. Yeah, I don't, I hear what you're saying, I and mean, I have I have my um, engineer engineer right. who's, 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 studies traffic flow right. and yeah. patterns I and spaces. And I understand like that. Uh, we're just, we're well, just I'm giving just, some ideas. But getting yeah, some, yeah, I'm yeah, just throwing out an idea. And, and, this, and he would, you would have to communicate that, see if it was possible. I'm not saying to do that. I'm not saying anything like that. It just seems feasible to me. And the reason that's important that if, if we feel that it's feasible that you can move that parking lot, then that will give us reason not to allow a permit. One of, one of the, the other issue, though, is the um, Richard is the subsurface stormwater infiltration chambers, right. that, mm -hmm. but they have what he has marked there. Right. That still might be necessary, right? Even with moving spaces, right? And, right. Then, and that that's disturbing in the buffer. Oh. So that's the thing. Okay. Like it, it might be unavoidable. Yeah. Point, so it's if, like, if, if that doesn't get moved along with the parking, right? Like you the set this up. I didn't hear what he said. The stormwater infiltration. No. Uh, this, yeah. It's like dying yeah, that has to move as well. Yeah. It's under the parking lot. Yeah. Any disturbance there is going to require a wetlands permit. Right. So if you make the decision of whether you want to keep it like this and apply for a wetlands sure. permit, because you definitely would have to under this scenario. So, so, and my hope was I ended up having to have a, a, a family uh, uh, issue that I had to deal with down you know, in Florida, so I didn't get a chance to get the wetland permit right. in. And it, my intention is to do that because okay. I, because the thing is, I'm recognizing no matter what I do, if if I'm working to take the house down, I'm I'm you're digging, yeah, I'm, in the I'm dealing you're digging it up anyway. Yeah. If yeah. I'm mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm taking uh, and going to remove the septic out of there and bring it back to grass again, mm -hmm. same thing. Same. Or even if any, any kind of a traffic yeah. flow in there. The other thing is, I know that we're going to have to bring in uh, approximately an 800 amp service into the building itself because there's an existing 800 amp service that came through for the other building and we're going to need to do the same thing again now whether it becomes overhead and crosses over the, the water area they, at that i'm not 100 percent sure right. yet i mean at this point my, my intentions are to not even be, be remotely close to the water itself so mm -hmm. so let me just so for your information and knowledge that when you apply for a wetlands permit, you will need to have um, a wetland specialist that we can recommend um, go out and uh, delineate the buffer, the wetlands and the buffer. They'll flag it. Then your surveyor will actually re refine this line. So I mean, things change after a while. Sure. So you maybe you get lucky, and the wetlands buffer is out of your picture there. So it may not be quite. It as may not as may not be yeah. a problem. So this so, map is obviously delineated and put the stream in there. It was just part of the survey. 
Yeah. So you, you and so you would, under process. the process, you would either hire somebody to do that, or you can have the person that works for us do it, and then they okay. you pay that fee for yeah, that. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes that works out a little bit cheaper to do it that way because whatever is easier for everybody. Yeah, as far yeah. As, uh, that's just, all part of the application. You'll sure. see it when you just sure. so you know there's some expense in for you in applying for the permit for the survey for survey work and the wetland specialist or. Uh, a person to go delineate the wetland, the buffer. Right. But it, I've already spent oh, tens yeah, of sure. thousands yeah. of dollars yeah, over the last five months here. Yeah, so yeah. At, at this point, it, right. I mean, tr truth is, I don't, it, unless I keep the, the building, the existing building, and don't even touch it, right? right? And then it can say, okay, we, just, we work on this park law thing, and that's the real issue in here. Right. But I, I, I just don't see, no matter, because the last time, even even when I was just six feet into the line, yeah. you guys had a difficulty yeah. with it, right? So if, if that be the case there, then <clears throat> then if, even if I'm six feet over here, right. you're going to require Howard, me to Howard, get it. Howard, how do you view, if, I would, if he's removing a, a building that's in the buffer and restoring it, in other words, restoring the land, and they plant the appropriate grass and do whatever you're going to do in it, is, is that restorative work? Consider it a benefit to wetlands or you know wetland law or any anything like that, or is it still a disturbance that we have to work on? Well, probably a disturbance, or it's a beneficial disturbance. Right. It would be up to whoever is a specialist evaluating that right. to, to weigh it in the balance. So it depends on what he's disturbing at the moment. But but generally the rule is wetlands that have nothing in them are the most healthy wetlands. Right. Generally, that's a generality. So. Right. That would be who's ever evaluating this, uh, be it Steve Marino or Steve somebody Marino, else, right. to weigh all of that in the balance. But I personally would say if you remove things out of the wetlands and put them back in natural order, it's probably a benefit. But right. I'm not the one that says that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so that's, that's, that's what I'm trying, trying to say yeah. is we may look at that uh, as a benefit and not, and not be object to it. So um, and that's, that's how I'm seeing it too. Is that uh, I'm not trying to add. I'm trying to take away in right. a sense for for positive. Take away septic. That's their take away. Well, all of that helps your effect. application. You're, you're going to do a wetlands application, and all of that is stuff that gets weighed. Sure. You'll see. You'll read through the wetlands law, and you'll see all the different factors that get considered. So all of that goes into the evaluation of whether the, the board will say, okay, yep. yeah, that's yep. that's fine. And as you guys, some of you already might know that I've gone through and spoke with the Army Corps of Engineers. It, we were not, it, it takes a while to actually yeah. get response. The, the only thing is everybody. those things don't matter for our wetlands law. Like we already knew that, that this is not a DEC wetland and this is not an Army Corps of Engineer thing. The wetlands that we care about because we have to by the law that was passed in this town are delineated on a wetland map in the town. There are certain maps that say, okay, this is a wetland for the purposes of this law. And that's what we're looking at. And so whether it's a, most of the wetlands, wetlands around here are not federal wetlands or some of them are DEC wetlands, but not. Thank you, but you, you had DEC and Army Corps on the application. Yeah. So I they still have, had to go through. Yeah, yes, they have the different criteria though. Criteria they, say, okay, yeah. what, how they look at it. In my mind, I'm thinking, well, gee, you know, if if the Army Corps of Engineers, that's all they deal with is environment, and if the DEC, if it's all they do is deal with environment, and, and, and if their restrictions are pretty high, but you, what the town has put on there has doubled or tripled what their restriction is. In other words, DEC doesn't even look, they say, look, at it, if, if it's within 50 feet, all right, then we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Army Corps says, unless we're actually sticking a shovel in the water or doing something, yeah, right, there, there's a yeah, issue, yeah. right? And neither but, of them look at that's it as, our law as a is wetland. more restrictive. Yeah. We're at looking at 100 foot from, from a wetland. We look at um, water courses, wetlands, water courses, all sure. sorts of things that are just not in their purview. And I think that was the intention of the law when it was passed in this town was, oh, look, nobody's protecting these wetlands. Or, or water courses, these smaller things, and so that's why we're going to pass a local law. Makes sense. So. Makes sense. And I get it. You, you don't want it to be there. It's it's a free to do whatever you want, whenever you want. There's got to be some kind of water and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, 
So my question then for the board would be, do you want to engage Steve Marino now, like before the application, so that he can maybe go out to the site, meet with the applicant, and maybe do the delineation ahead of time, but see if it's how far we are in the buffer, and then advise from I mean, there? I think that's or should, a good idea. The only thing that I start to worry about then is fees. Yeah. Uh, you know, Steve Marino, the minute he starts, then there's a fee involved. Mm -hmm. And if we don't yet have a wetland application. Who's Steve Marino? He's the, wetland. He's the town's wetland consultant. It's okay. on on call. For this is all that you, you guys hire out, so I would be able to use him as well. Yes, we, be able to use him to delineate. He will oh, okay. delineate the wetlands. He'll meet with you on for site. You and us. Yeah. And, um, that'd, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. And you would you would pay his fee. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. No. So is that have we done that before? Where we've hired him before? There's an application no, in front no. of us. No, not in my year, almost year. Because then if, guys. He, if he goes out there and does work, and then the applicant doesn't come through with an application, doesn't get then how are we? So, yeah, well, well, but I, think, yeah. I think, but I think that what he's talking about is really a request for a delineation, which might sit outside of this process, but is still beneficial to the extent that the applicant then comes back with a wetland permit, because then we know what we're actually talking mm -hmm. about. I think that's yeah. I mean, if it, if this red line moves, yeah, anyway, could potentially move yeah, out he, of he, the he could or in Steve or, Marino and hire him. To delineate the buffer. Mm -hmm. Well, technically, he's he can't. Um, the town's on-call consultant, so oh. I think it would be more appropriate for the town to request services. Or yes, but I think that that fee would be applied as Aaron's fee or our fee would be applied to mm -hmm. the application, mm -hmm. and I think it would answer whether or not he needs the wetlands permit. Exactly. Right. Like, so okay. it could save in the end, or you intelligently determine that yes, you're in it. You're in it. 15 feet and no amount of moving is going to change that. So submit the permit and then continue the process. I mean, that's what I'm already assuming that needs to be done. And mm -hmm. So that's whatever the process is, so we don't delay it for okay. months on end, right. I'm happy to work sense. with you. So guys. I'm just trying to now do this as streamlined as possible for you. But sure. you're going to go that way. So we're trying, what we're trying to do is here is get you to use the, the specialist, the marina. Yep before the next meeting so we could see where the buffer is. That'd be fantastic. Is he uh, also a surveyor? No, he's, he's not. not. No. Okay. He will no. flag it. He will and then you flag get your that. surveyor out there okay. and he'll put it on this map. Got it. Got it. And it may move. It may move. But I believe you then need to have a surveyor do it as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah she does. Different. He does. Yeah. He'll shoot the flags. Yeah. 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 He'll, he'll plot yeah. the flags. So, yeah. okay. okay. So about my comment about the access road, maybe just being cut in half, per se, like in, in kind of starting here and ending instead of starting over yeah, here. Turn Are you willing to entertain that? And because yeah. we would want Aaron, Steve would to have the latest plan. There, I mean, is, mm -hmm. it, am I um, encroaching on something or? or, or um, My only thought is that just it's just I don't know. It's a lot. The, the fire department already weighed in and said they don't think it's necessary. It could save you working with the town of Clinton because you're right, you know, right there on the close to the sure. buffer but that would serve that would be in their jurisdiction um you know it, it, and for me in all honesty it's not truth is it's, it's really me that was more pushing it more than the school uh -huh. just from, from 36 years of building knowing how the flow of things are it's just trying to create something really nice for them because they've never actually ever had it ever or whatever it is but so it I would say I, I'm not stuck on it by any right. means. It's, so it, mm -hmm. it's, it's the fact is, if, if like you guys pointed out, you have a possibility we'd be able to yeah. back up and go around there. And if they had something they can back up and pull out, All right. I'm, I'm tickled pink by that. Right. that. That would be fantastic. So okay, okay. And that save, us save a lot of money. Too. It's, it's a lot of retaining wall there. there. Yeah. There's a, a huge amount of money that sure. would be yeah. saved oh, on yeah. that. Because okay. it's, it's a steep slope right there. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. The, the, the slope is steep yes, on this yeah, 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 but yeah. there's a little, right. uh, yeah. little ravine, and it's not yeah. that bad right here. Yeah. But still, it's 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 money. It's mm -hmm. two, four, six, eight feet. Yes. So we could engage Steve Marino. You can revise this plan, and you can meet with him possibly between now and the next meeting to delineate, and maybe you can have a, a plan submitted, or at least bring to the meeting um, yeah. the latest scheme. 
I'll, I'll be able to get it within that two week mm -hmm. time period. You know, but by the time of meeting Steve Marino out there and getting a surveyor and everything else, we'll bring whatever you have. But I can bring whatever you have. <laughs> well, we'll, there. well, well now I think we don't need an application submitted though. That yeah. We'll that could start. That would that would start the process. I would start that. So why don't could, you start working on the application simultaneously to having him go out and delineate it? Right. I pretty much have it all filled out. Okay. I have it okay. with me already so, for the most. So part. submit the application, uh, Kristen or write the applet last permit, and then we'll get going. You'll you'll be able to move along here. So I'll get I'll submit what I have. At this point, you know there might be a couple of small things. Like for yeah. example, we're waiting on Steve Marino, right. mm -hmm. so I can I can submit what I do have as far as the, right, and that'd that be great because then we can authorize Steve Marino to go out. Okay, uh, so with this, do I talk contact Kristen? Yes, She's yeah. going to give me the Kristen. contact permission for for Steve. We'll set that and up. And we'll contact happen. Steve, right, and just let him know that I can help yeah, with I that. I can give him your yeah. contact. Okay. Well, yeah, I, mean, you can help I can that. I can help with contact yeah. getting Steve looped in. I can Great. email him, That'd send him this. That. Do you have a copy of this uh, PDF you can send yeah. soon? Yeah. Okay. The Just, two things I just want to bring up to attention to you is one is I am dealing with a uh, tra traffic control yeah. specialist right. okay. for the town of Clinton, and once that information gets all through, I'll bring a copy in here as well. At, for the other thing that was uh, brought up was the um, on the variance board. They had mentioned one the two fire departments yep. look at it. Milbrook. One of them mentioned that they were concerned not with the, the actual overall height of the building, but with the e height, which is proposed at 25 feet. And truth be told, even if we were doing a, a flat roof, it's still going to be right around that 25 feet because if you do if you do the math on it. Typically, a commercial like ceiling, commercial ceiling is, is 10 foot. So you got 10 foot between two floors, and you have two feet between it for your your structure. That's 22 feet right there. And then if I'm if I'm two to three feet of foundation on the ground, parapet. So in, in a, lo a lot of the new a lot of the new houses, they're 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 building with nine foot wall height to begin right. with. The, at 25 feet is really not uh, so their issue was to be able to place a ladder, right? Um, well, he said, he, I think his name is Ted uh, Bonus, is that, is that yes. pronounced? And if, what I, I didn't get a chance to speak with him, I sent an email out to try to contact him, and at no avail, tried to even make contact in the Millbrook offices. There's nobody there to, to, yeah. to answer anything. So I have not, I wanted to be able to connect with him to say, hey, Let's put our heads together. What is it that you're looking for? How mm -hmm. can we make this work, right? So, he, if, what I'm thinking of understanding is they have a 28 foot extension ladder is what they have on the truck, which typically as a builder that's what I what I have, which gives you a 25 feet working height, right? Mm -hmm. right? To get to the roof, All right? Right. You get you, and then when you're on the roof, you're, it's walkable all the right. way around. One of the things that you guys read read the uh, the minutes on it, he had said that they wouldn't use the access road because they typically like to have a, um, one and a half times just the yeah. distance if, if the building collapse. burns and collapse and something like that. Mm -hmm. so I, that's why I get that part of it. Um, Don is the other uh, fire inspector. I think he's for uh, Clinton Corners. Clinton, I guess. Yep. Our yes. fire chief. That is, he didn't have a problem with, with, on his end of it. But anyway, so it's really a matter of trying to work with him as far as figuring out um, what makes sense, uh, but I don't. I don't see the the e plate going any less than twenty five mm -hmm. unless I can sink the the building in the ground. But I, I need to get pitch in order to get my septic to flow mm -hmm. outside. So there's going to be a little bit of height there. Yeah, I don't want it to be high out of the ground either because I'm looking at handicap right. accessibility. Yeah, right. I would, yeah. My preference would be to bring it as low as possible and bring it right in. Because even still, there's going to be an elevator whip that goes from this building down to that building mm -hmm. for for handicapped uh, children. And, uh, well, maybe talk to Ted Bonas. I yeah, think that's yeah. the next thing. Just maybe my message. I should get back to you. I'm surprised he hasn't. We can well, help. I tried calling the Kristen. building, and there's nobody there. And yeah. even when I look up the uh, chief, it's another somebody else's name. So I have, I have no contact information outside of being able to email him, and I've, I've tried that and. I haven't gotten back. Well, he knows Kristen well. He always responds through your emails. You want to connect them via email, maybe? Yeah. Mr. Bovey and Chief. Yeah. 
and that he wants, he's trying to reach him, and maybe that'll help. Just a thought. Might just get a lot of emails and thinks it's spam or something. Who knows? The other thing is, from my own knowledge, what does it say, we're back on the, uh, the wetland, what does it say in there, does it say no work, no, how does that, how is that? Um, Ground disturbance? Because, for example, I know that they mow the lawn right up to the stream, right? Is, mm -hmm. is mowing considered work in no. the buffer, right? No. Or digging, trees, excavating, or, so digging, excavating, building. Disturbing topsoil yeah. is explicitly listed in the code. Well, so right. it must be a certain amount of topsoil. That um, obviously, and I'm not looking to get picky thing, by There it, is but, some sort of a um, size. Of, constraint, I yeah. think, if it's so tiny, but, but nothing you're doing is so tiny. Right, right. Yeah. And so, Steve, for example, yeah. this the, their existing house, I know that over the years they had remodeled that. Right. They put new replacement windows in, they felt like that. W would they have been required technically to get a wetlands permit if they were doing the interior no. No, 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 it would be exterior. I'd say, for example, it's if they weren't the in the movement. ground, if they no. weren't di disturbing the ground, okay. they really yeah. so they weren't right. adding a foundation or a room or anything like that. So they weren't weren't required. If, I mean, Got if it. they did add a room, of course that would be different. But also that would have our laws only been in effect since 2011, I okay. think. Mm -hmm. So if they did work prior to that, it wasn't even a, a law. So it's really once you break through the top soil, as Aaron said, and just start disturbing that is really when it comes yeah. to questions so like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes and sense. Steve, another benefit of working with Steve is that he helped write the law. So he knows <laughs> it pretty well. Too. Right. So um, yeah. well, that's good to know. Yeah. yeah. So and that, that's it. I really appreciate you guys working with me and, and helping me along the way on this and it's been a journey. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what Getting can you do? There, it's, you it's, get it's, it. <laughs> It's a, it's, it's a work in progress, right? And we're, yeah. we're getting there. We're making headway. We're, you know, getting each thing uh, well, along here. We're right down to the nitty gritty now. We are. Yeah. We are. So yeah. there's light at the tunnel. Right. But thanks again. Yeah. So there's, anything else? And there's, there's only, well, procedurally, obviously, there's Seeker that's still out there. It sounds like we're going to get some traffic information soon. Um, this still would require referral to the county, but the site plan isn't really, it's still kind of a moving target. So I'd rather we wait until it's updated and maybe you know you have the wetland delineation in there you have the access road revised and then we can do the county referral it takes 30 days you can do it between meetings okay. when it's ready um i think that's it for now i can't and a public hearing but right that's down the road so i'm so public hearing where i mean where in it in the grand scheme of things where are you guys seeing that um if, if we're moving this more like in the may june time frame Probably. Well, depends on how the wetlands. Next month is uh, April. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be so, at least be uh, May. Right. Maybe if, June. if we didn't have the wetlands issues, we'd be flying through this. So uh, the wetlands are, is, a, is the main, sticky one. The sticky one, yeah, right? Sure. And, and that'll have its own public hearing as well. So maybe combine them. I don't know. Um, but the site plan approval and. Uh, but the key thing is having a firm plan. Right. This yes. is what we're doing. Right. Because we really can't schedule any public hearings. We can't move to those next steps until we have this firm plan, and we send it to the county, We then, then all those things. Then we can set a public hearing. So, th th so there's going to be two public hearings? I think it could be no, one. We could combine, right? We combine. Yeah, it would be yeah. one for the we planning board's actions, which are site plan approval and wetland permit. Right. Um, and you guys are kind of uh, spearheading for the variance? as well, or, well or how does that work? The, very, the ZBA that's process ZBA. is there in a public hearing still that's being continued and continued until you have Seeker concluded from the planning board because they're an involved agency for the environmental review under Seeker and they can't take action until the lead agency whose planning board acts on uh, environmental determination. So I think if you get this issue with the roof squared away with the chief in Millbrook, um, the ZBA will probably just be like, all right, we're waiting for the planning board, and we'll right. just, they might not even want you to come to the meetings until right. that's okay. ready. Um, so. Well, Christo, I'll look for the phone number from you. If I can, you can email that to me, that would be great. For Ted. Oh, yeah, you have the email. Okay. Yeah, Maybe I, I, was, I was thinking, phone number, oh, or, he hasn't responded back to my email. I don't know that I have his I was thinking you could, you could just connect them by email. 
yeah. Chief and Mr. Bobby connect them by email and to say he has some questions about your comments and yeah. okay. can you yeah, connect? We'll yeah. That'd be great. Okay. We're good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once again, thank you for everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank See you again. <laughs> Thanks. Anybody got copies? Yes. Yeah. Thank yes, you. thank you for that. So, Jim, you got copy. I like the red line to it. That's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, just get that over. You know, I spent some time there. And why does her on the last various meeting handled herself very well? Thank you. I appreciate that. She always does. I'm going to ask the full audience. Okay, so does anyone have anything else uh, that's not on the agenda? Nope. No. Okay, so I would ask for a motion to close the public, to uh, close the meeting. Motion to close the meeting. Robert, Seconded. 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 That, ma All in favor? Right, Aye. Right. Good night and God bless. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Jim. Bye, Susan.